You may not have heard of microplastics, but you are in fact surrounded by them. Chewing gum, carpets, tea bags, they all contain these tiny fragments and therefore so do we. There's growing research looking at the links between microplastics and dementia, fertility and certain cancers. And now a private London clinic has developed a new treatment to remove them from your blood. But does it work? I'm Lucy Watson and this is What You Need To Know. Well, joining me is our science correspondent, Martin Stew. Now, you've been looking into this. You've been along to the clinic, Martin. First of all, I mean, many of our listeners, many of our viewers will already know, but just enlighten me, maybe, as to exactly what microplastics are. OK, so micro and plastic, they're really small bits of plastic. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, it needs to be smaller than five millimetres. Think of the rubber on the end of a pencil. So something smaller than that is technically a microplastic. They're normally much smaller than that. And what they are often is where plastic gets broken down into smaller and smaller pieces, a bit like stones on the beach turning into sand it gets ground down the mm. same thing happens with plastic and then it doesn't really degrade it takes hundreds of years often so it stays in the environment you also have some bits of microbeads remember back in the day you used to have um, facial scrubs or toothpaste with microbeads that's now banned in this country but those actual beads are still around in the environment and as we're using more plastic the number of microplastics are gradually going up over time because say, they take a long time to degrade. Now, they can be in everything, you know, Tupperware, sanitary towels, nappies, tea bags, water bottles. Sports. I mean, we say this as I am drinking a cup of tea. You're drinking I a cup of tea, yes, but at least you're drinking from a china bag. mug, not no, a plastic okay, cup. Okay. okay. And, and the other one, which is quite a big one, is, is synthetic clothing, particularly like you know, nylon sports gear, all that sort of stuff. It goes in the wash as it breaks down those tiny particles get washed into the water course, end up in the sea. Plus, we put lots and lots of plastic onto the land. Roughly speaking, 910,000 tonnes in the UK every year. That breaks down, gets up in the soil. So what we're starting to see is these tiny bits of plastic absolutely everywhere. In the air we breathe, in the ice in Antarctica, in the food we eat. It's potentially impacting the environment. We found bits of microplastic in the guts of fishes, lots of them in shellfish because they're bottom feeders so as bits of microplastics wash through in the sea in your muscles or your clams wherever it might be that's getting in there too and one test looking at worms found that they'd had reduced fertility as a result of microplastics and so it's no real surprise when it's everywhere that it is in us, us as well. Too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one research, which is quite terrifying, looked at... Oh, the, God, I know, I know this you statistic know this you're about to tell me. Yeah. yeah, so they looked at the brain of somebody who died and they found seven grams of plastic, or microplastics. That is the same as a plastic spoon in your brain. So the question is, you know, what is this doing to us? Oh, Martin, you're just making me have this big sigh. Yeah. <laughs> is this another thing I need to worry about? Just how bad is it that these microplastics are swimming around in my brain then? What is the real health impact, I suppose? Well, the answer is we don't really know. Okay. Uh, m most people seem to say... I expect you to know everything. No, well, I'm sorry I don't. But th <laughs> <laughs> logic would suggest limiting the amount of plastics, a strange foreign particle in your body, would be a good thing. You know, the WHO, the World Health Organization, have said we need to have further research. And what we are seeing is that research happening at the moment. There isn't kind of one particular smoking gun at the moment, but lots and lots of papers are starting to link microplastics to things like dementia, low fertility, heart disease, cancer, all these diseases that we're seeing the levels of going up in society, and it's hard to explain why. One of the theories being examined is whether microplastics are playing a part in that. But as I say, we don't know definitively yet, but the kind of the prevention of harm theory would suggest maybe it's sensible to limit our exposure to microplastics if we can. Now, if I was swimming in cash, there is now a place in the UK, in fact, in London, that can effectively clean your blood. Just tell me a bit about this place. Yeah, so that's what they say. They're called Clarify Clinic. And what they're offering is a bit like dialysis. It's a two hour process, it takes your blood out, and cleans it, they say they can remove somewhere between 90 and 99% of the microplastics in your blood. And here's how they say they can do it. So what we're doing is we're taking your blood out of your arm, putting it through a Taruma machine, which splits the blood into two components. One is red blood cells, the other one is plasma. Plasma goes into our column, which is where all the magic happens. That's where we're taking out the microplastics, the forever chemicals and the poisons and toxins out of your plasma. It comes back into the unit 
combines and back into your other arm. It's pretty expensive, isn't it? It's not cheap, no. So uh, the two-hour treatment costs just under £10,000. Right. And it's not a one-off. Because what happens with microplastics is they get stored in the fat in your body. So you can clean your blood, or the company says you can clean your blood, remove up to 99% of the microplastics from your blood, but obviously there'd then still be some stored in your fat. The theory goes, or so they say, that over time what happens is the high concentration of bits of plastic in your fat would then work out into your blood where there's a lower concentration. So by cleaning it again regularly, you can keep the levels down and possibly lower them further. That is the theory. The question is, does it work and is it good value? And of we, course, that was going to be my Well, there we go. And, and we put that to one GP, Dr. Masumi Mukherjee, and it's fair to say she was relatively sceptical. What's their justification for £10,000 if it's a two-hour job? In general practice and in most of the NHS, we would want evidence. Every procedure has possible side effects. Have they? I hope they've done studies on it. Um, and until I saw that evidence, I would not advise any of my patients to do that. And then responding to what she'd said, I put that question to David Cohen. So he's the guy from Clarify Clinics who are offering this service. What would you say to people who say, this is a gimmick and it's a very expensive one at that? I'd say they should look at the research and the results. The research from very prestigious journals is showing we are taking microplastics out. So, I mean, the GP is a bit sceptical. How did, how did you feel when you, were, when you were there? Did you believe in the whole thing? I, I could definitely see the logic. So, I mean, yeah. it, if you've ever seen someone having kidney dialysis, they take blood out of your body, they clean it, and they put it back in your body, it works. Now, what they're using here is basically the same machine. As the guide explained, it splits the blood up and it puts it back in. That's medically tested and is definitely safe. The, the difference here is a particular filter. It's this tube that's got a kind of a filtering device. It's not that dissimilar to one you might see under someone's sink for a kind of a you know, w water filter. Slightly more advanced, of course, and doing something different. <laughs> and more expensive. And more expensive. But that's what they're doing. So the theory kind of makes sense. And they're also, as well as removing blood plastics, they say it removes um, what are called forever chemicals. You might have heard people say, be careful uh, if you get a chipped non-stick frying pan or don't put your non-stick in the dishwasher. The reason for that is um, Teflon type materials were developed back in the 50s and they're brilliant because they're brilliant lubricants, things don't stick to them and they last and last and last. That's why they're called forever chemicals. The problem with that is when they then get chipped or get into the environment, because they never ever break down, they are stuck forever. And some previous forever chemicals, there's one called PIFOA, um, was proven to be carcinogenic, i.e. it causes cancer. There are tens of thousands of other forever chemicals. Now, they are not directly linked to cancer yet, but people who are worried about them would say that's because we haven't done enough research about them. We just don't know. So this company is sort of saying, right, we can remove the microplastics, we can also remove forever chemicals and general inflammation in your blood, which does sort of make sense. But, you know, it is a huge amount of money to outlay. It is a relatively short-term fix that you would need to have do again. And it's just probably not practical for everybody to be having that. And, and we still, there's not enough body of evidence really to say definitely this is going to solve that problem. And to be honest, I hadn't really thought about, and all the things you do think about, about your body and mm. keeping it healthy, my blood is not one that I naturally think about as yeah. in I must keep that clean. Yes. But you did test your blood at this place, didn't you? Just to see how good it was? I mean, that seems a very simplistic word to use, perhaps. No. How good? How clean? How clean, I think, yeah. So they did, they did a, a basic finger prick test, and then I came back six weeks later, and we can find out the results now. When I started, I had 50 partic total particles. So that is 500 particles per milliliter of blood. Immediately after, I had five total particles. Okay. So I had a 90% reduction. Big question. <laughs> what about my results? So you actually have the lowest microplastics of anyone we've tested so far. You really? have six particles pre. Why is it low for me? It's a combination of lifestyle, good choices, and of genetics. So I'm sitting next to a superhuman then. Well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have to go on about it, but I, I, was, I was amazed. I don't like yeah. to go on about it, but that's... I've mentioned it once or twice, sure. But, uh, <laughs> but I was amazed because I don't... You know, I try and do various things, but I don't go out of my way. You're a naturally healthy um, specimen. Well, it might be. Actually, one of the theories is that um, there's quite a lot of 
uh, microplastics in some cleaning products. So the fact that I don't do enough cleaning around the home <laughs> could be an don't a reason. Don't say that in front of me, Mark. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but it does. it's interesting because I was then had a, a, a longer conversation about what it is, why that may be that yeah. mine is quite low. She said, you know, lifestyle type thing, so lack of cleaning. But also making choices. I would normally carry a... You know, a metal water bottle or a glass water bottle rather than a plastic one. Well, naturally, that is what I was going to ask you, because yeah. let's face it, the vast majority of us don't have 10 grand no. in our back pocket no. to spend on something like this, whether it is absolutely brilliant or not. So realistically, what can, you know, the every man, the every woman do? Yeah, well, the short answer is there's lots of things that you you can't limit from it. In the air we breathe, it, it, these things are, are everywhere. There's a couple of things which might help. So I think the, the, the biggest one, if you were to take anything away, is don't heat things up in the microwave in plastic. So, you know, you've got that takeaway set in the fridge that you didn't finish last night and you bung it in the microwave to, okay. to rewarm it. Because when you warm up the plastics, that tends to release lots of these microplastics. Similarly, putting boiling water into plastic lined cups and things like that isn't fantastic. So those are two things you could avoid. Um, they're relatively simple. They're relatively simple. You know, other things, maybe try and use glass Tupperware, glass water bottles or metal instead of plastic if you can. Um, natural fibres, so wearing cotton rather than polyester clothing. All those like trendy sports gears, leggings, all that sort of stuff, because they're made of those plasticky fibres. Every time they go through the wash, you're just getting more plastic things being released. Similarly with carpet furniture, you know, if you have a wool blend instead of a nylon blend, all these tiny things. And a wool blend instead of an island blend of your carpet. Well, you can have, them, what you have okay. a higher blend of wool. You know a lot more about carpet than uh, I well, do. Well, only because it was <laughs> almost cheaper than the other one I was looking at. <laughs> um, the other thing, which um, plays into my lack of cleaning, but actually vacuum cleaning can be an easy thing because you are physically hoovering up and removing the dust. So the microplastic dust, rather than going in the air, you can suck it into a bag and dispose of it. So that's a sort of a simple hit. But I think the main thing is to say, Try not to panic too much about it. You know, reduce your exposure where you can, but it is everywhere. You know, there, there are there are lots of things in life which cause us damage. We don't know the full extent of the damage of microplastics. It seems sensible to try and limit the damage just to avoid that risk. But you can't do everything. So you just <laughs> enjoy your life, Lucy. Don't panic. <laughs> don't lose sleep over I this. I plan to, but yeah. I'm a little bit more informed after talking Good. to you anyway. Good. Good. Thank you very much, Martin. And for more of Martin's coverage of all things scientific, head to itv.com forward slash news. Until our next quick briefing, thanks for joining us.